From Earl Scruggs and Ricky Skaggs to Allison Krauss, Phil Ledbetter has shared the stage with bluegrass legends and country music greats. This is Phil Ledbetter, the best dobro player in the world. And whether it's performing or recording, Phil's happiest with strings in hand. You could say he inherited his strumming ability. My dad was a banjo player. And growing up, his family had a Saturday night ritual. We'd all sit down and watch a Flat and Scrug show. And I heard this instrument that I didn't know what it was, but I liked it. The Dobro. Life would never be the same. And I'd practice in the afternoons, I'd practice in the morning, and it got where I'd go to school and I would take my picks with me and I'd sit and pick on my desk. By age 12, Phil was in a band called the New Grass Boys. The very first place I ever played was at uh, a Market Square Mall at a contest. And I knew then I wanted to play. The band New Dawn followed. We played during the whole entire World's Fair. We worked for Budweiser and for Buddy's Barbecue. When the fair finished, Phil went into the nursing field for a more stable career, but missed his music. You know, I decided I'm going to go to Nashville, so, uh, you know, it looked like it was easy. After two years, he finally got a gig with Grand Old Opry's Grandpa Jones, and then he called up J.D. Crow. The guy that was my dad's favorite banjo player. Phil spent the next 11 years touring the world with J.D. Crow. My very favorite was the time, the first time I got to play the Grand Ole Opry. He played on two records with Crow, one of which received a Grammy nomination. Then Phil started the band Wildfire and ventured out with a solo record called Slide Effects. That album won Instrumental Album of the Year, and then I won Dobro Player of the Year that year. It was 2005. And Gibson Guitars built a Dobro series with Phil's name on it. The sunny sand you also made you. While on tour with the Whites, Phil's health started deteriorating. I about died. It was, uh, I, I tried to play it down a lot with, with where I was. Phil went to the doctor. Two days later, he was in the hospital diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Phil needed chemotherapy. He said, it'll probably take away all your feeling in your hands. You may not be able to play more. He was ready to bow out of bluegrass. I've done and been blessed and got to do more than I ever dreamed I, I would get to. After six months of intense treatment, the cancer didn't go away. So he turned to Facebook for support. Somebody said, why do you, why do you want to you know, tell everybody what's going on? And I said, I need all the prayers I can get. Support posted from all over the world. I'm thinking, wow, I'm getting prayers 24 hours a day. On and offline, Phil's cancer-fighting army carried him forward. After another failed medicine... When I went back, it was in both sides of my legs, my pelvis, base of my brain, everywhere. Phil finally received a stem cell transplant September 10th, 2012. It's been a year, nearly a year and a half now. I'm completely clear with no sign. And it gets better. I hadn't played for two years. I quit. Phil can not only play, he's back in the recording studio. Working on a new album and touring. I run into so many cancer patients out on the road anymore. Maybe that's his plan is to have me be able to spread the message. A message of hope, survival, and song. I don't take it for granted. Phil Ledbetter, born in Knoxville. A lot of good musicians out of out of East Tennessee. Homegrown in Tennessee.